When we talk about the computing ecosystem, most people can name the obvious players such as Intel, AMD to build the processors, and Microsoft that builds the Windows operating system. But here is the problem, what does IBM actually do in its first early days? Let's break it down using a three-layer computing stack. Layer 1, the hardware, CPUs and GPUs, that's Intel, AMD, NVIDIA. They manufacture the silicon, the core, the cache, the instruction pipelines, and execute the machine code. Layer 2, operating system. It is Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Microsoft and Apple's built them. And layer 3 is the runtime. And that's IBM's real domain. Java is the enterprise software that it built around. The IBM did not create the Java language, but it was one of the largest contributors to the Java ecosystem, especially on the server side. And Java Virtual Machine that developed and maintained those J9 JVMs and contributed heavily to the enterprise edition. And here is the part people mostly forget. Most banks, airlines, insurance, government still runs on Java-based ecosystem. Although Python is popular now, but most big companies are still using Java in their backend. In other words, IBM owns the enterprise runtime layer of computing. So what does IBM do? In one sentence, it builds enterprise runtime and middlewares. And why is IBM often tied to CPU? It's because the benchmark, the 2000 error, Enterprise computing shifted from C, Fortran, into Java servers. They wanted to show how fast is a GPU. So how do you say a CPU is fast? You need sort of benchmark. And the industry standard benchmark emerged. Uh, it's called SPAC, SPAC JVM, and many of these benchmarks use or align with IBM's optimized Java virtual machines. And that's why Intel, i7, AMD, AWS, the CPU vendors need to score well on the Java benchmarks that IBM heavily influenced. This made IBM a critical part of defining what a fast CPU performance even means for enterprise workload.